Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dyes cast. I am Russell Zong, and with me I have... Yes, man. When we last left off, Aquans and Yoris began their investigation into the apparent the apparent case of a small child who could not wake up from who her parents could not awaken from a deep sleep. The party found out in short order that this was not the only case of this, and that there were a few of these going around, and that also apparently somehow cats were involved in the case for some reason. Straight cats were involved in the case. It soon became apparent that the children were being placed under a deep sleep enchantment, far more powerful than the standard sleep spell, and also that there was some form of negative energy effect in place which was siphoning away their life force, which the cats seemed to be being used as relays for. After a lengthy investigation and a few failed attempts to <laughs> capture or the cats, they released one of the stray cats and f- decided to follow it stealthily, into the uh, waterlogged catacombs beneath the city of Lyria, where they found a strange artifact and a large spectral cat-like creature, which uh, seemed to be protecting it. This artifact had a crystal in it, which is being used to store the life energy of the children who were being drained by this process. And the party battled the... the, uh, phantom guardian and managed to remove the crystal putting an end to this process at least for the moment later the same day they met with aldrich and master amadeus malzra the resident archmage of lyria and headmaster at the lyrian academy for arcane research (laughs) needless to say this was a surprise to the party as was the fact that for their efforts they were granted two additional guild crest fragments bringing their total up to three of the seven they would need. The final event of the day was the party registering for the Guildcrest Tournament, which is being held in three days' time. Yep. All right. So that is where we left off. We are in the Guild Hall still. Yep. So, is there... I suppose now the thing to ask is, is there anything you want to do to prepare for this tournament, as we do have three days to... Well, uh, two and... uh, Admittedly... (laughs) Two and a half more at this point, basically, because we're approaching noon, so. Time to go shopping. That is a definite uh, place to start, you would think, because if there are any other adventurers participating in this tournament, which, if it's a tournament, it's likely. Yeah, we forgot to ask. Are we still there? We are still in the guild hall, yes. I'm going to ask the clerk uh, how many have signed up so far. Uh, uh, All right, just going to do a roll here for a second. Uh, so far, apart from the you know, from your group, there is one other signed up at the moment. Yeah. So it's not unusual for the turn for the tournament to bring in numerous uh, groups of adventurers, though, and there are always late signups. So there are there are still a few days left. Registration closes it has to be confirmed the day before, though, just so all the proceedings can be put in order. So. We will have a little competition at Rosemary's then. This is uh, the clerk we were talking to says, "Ah, in fact, I believe this is your competition now coming in." They're coming in now after they've signed up. Uh, well, I assume we turn around to look where the clerk is pointing. Yeah. All right. Entering the guild hall are three individuals, and one of and they. All right, so these individuals are well equipped and armored and armed, and they fit in this general description in of what an adventure would look like. Uh, one of them is a half orc dressed in plate mail and has a very large two handed hammer, which a maul strapped to his back. The other thing you notice that is a little out of place in this outfit is, apart from the fact that his armor is well maintained, and there's almost like livery that would you'd expect on like a knight errant to have, is that there is a necklace around a pendant which has a symbol on it. You would recognize this as probably being, in all likelihood, being a holy symbol of some sort. So an individual of faith. Do I recognize the deity or religion involved? You may roll a religion check if you wish. 
16. Wisdom is intelligence, right? Uh, religion is intelligence, yes. Uh, well, I don't have religion, so just uh, 20. Just your intelligence modifier. So 16? 20. Oh, 20. I rolled a 16. Oh, your natural 16. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Uh, you do recognize it because you have one of it. You actually have this holy symbol technically somewhere in your bag of holding. Uh, the only one I have would be Pablosag? Uh, Pablosag, yes, is, which is the holy symbol which resembles basically almost like the the astrological symbol of Sagittarius, which is a centaur shooting an arrow up into the sky, except the lower half instead of a horse is that of a scorpion. From that role, you do know that Pablosag is basically a god of justice and truth and law and uh, generally war, but war in favor of just causes and is a popular choice among paladins. So I have, I uh, just looked through my notes here, a journal from Valley, 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 V A L I. I believe, I think this is, we got this at the same place, which is the adventuring party we <laughs> found outside uh, Fort Zelen, I believe, which is after we left the plateau. I think Valley was the wizard, though. Okay. That group. Yes. But that, but that is where we got that holy symbol, which you have in your bag of holding somewhere. Uh, the next individual is. Do I know the name of the person that was, uh, well, had the holy symbol? You, uh, I do not believe so. No. I don't think we ever got the name. Right. Right. The next individual is a tall, relatively thin and, and lithe woman but uh, has still has a bit of muscle to her, but is of a people you haven't really encountered before. She kind of has this greenish-yellow skin, almost, that has these patches on it that brings to mind almost... almost like the skin of, like, uh, of a frog, almost, that type of texture, but a bit more... Uh, but not moist or dry. And she has ears res resembling an elf, but they have tiny serrations along the side. She's dressed in armor and has a great axe strapped to her back. And she's also holding a sack in her hand that looks like it ha is bloodstained. Do I recognize her species? Uh, this would be a nature check. I do not. What was the roll? Well, a natural two plus a few things, but nowhere near no six. So, no, you do not recognize uh, this people. And the third member is not armored, but wearing long, ro wearing robes, and is carrying a, not a staff, but a rod. And in fact, looking at the rod, you've seen one of a similar, similar make, though, of a different design a few days ago. A few days ago? When we first reached Lyria and went to Rosemary's Time and Clockwork. There was a half elven woman there with a similar looking rod. Oh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Kaylin. Yes, Mistress Kaylin. Kind of. This is of a. This is a similar shape and size of that rod, though of a clearly of a different design. Um, I can't remember. I mean, I remember Kaylin giving me a bad vibe. What about this person? Uh, you can roll an insight check. <laughs> You're rolling a check for each of them. <laughs> Uh, wisdom? Wisdom, yes. 16. Uh, this is almost night and day, literally, which is, uh, Kaelin was dressed in dark colors and also gave you a relatively bad feeling, just, also just that she had a lot of attitude. Looking at this person's dress and also the rod itself, it, it and the feeling you get goes in that. She is largely dressed in lighter colors, largely white, silver, and gold. The rod okay. is made of, uh, of either white metal or ivory or some sort of white wood and has runes over it that also seem to give off a faint silver shimmer. She's wearing a circlet that has a diamond in the center of it. And you'd almost miss, you'd almost look at her and think of possibly some sort of uh, cleric or holy person. However, unlike with the half work, you do not see any obvious holy symbol. And usually clerics and paladins and the like tend to have a display of their faith. 
Yes. They don't hide it. There is no such case in this person, though. And there's also some... She looks vaguely... She looks humanoid, but there's something a little different about her. Basically, you would compare her and me, basically, the same sort of thing. I could pass for human if I wasn't blue. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's got a, that same sort of uh, feel to it. There's almost like an otherworldly aspect to her. Her person. That's uh, quite the group they have there. Yes. And they seem to be approaching the counter. So they have to go by us, right? Well, well, they have to come up to the same area we're in. So yes, but they're not going to. There's not just one clerk. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna pull up the holy symbol from my yep. bag, and I'm going to walk up to. It takes you a few moments to find it, but yes. <laughs> oh, it's always on top. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I go walk up to the gentleman in the armor and the holy symbol and yes. say, excuse me, may I have a moment of your time? Right, I'm just going to roll to see. Right. Uh, all right, so you go up to them and all three of them turn to look. Can I just get a general charisma check? Oh, it's going to go bad. <laughs> Oh, that's not too bad. 13 minus 1. All right. That's uh, quite good. All right. Hey, it's so wonderful. That's quite good. All right. Uh, basically, so it's not so much, the reaction isn't so much like annoyance, but it's just a little bit of surprise. Mm-hmm. I guess they weren't expecting to be approached by a random stranger in the guild hall. All right. So uh, the half work turns to you and says, um, it says, uh, yes, you wanted something. It says we're you know, we're a little preoccupied at the moment. Uh, sorry to disturb you, but um, in our adventures a couple of months ago now, I recognized your holy symbol uh, because I found a party that came to a very foul end, and one of the members had uh, this on them, the holy symbol. And I said, I think it would be better with you than just sitting with me. So I just thought I'd return it to you, and maybe you know who it is. Maybe you can do something oh. about it. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> All right, uh, you see the half-work take the symbol, and Lucian says, well, this is definitely the, uh, this is, uh, the same. This is, this is definitely of my fate, he says, and this is also of Lyrian make, he says, look, comparing it to his own. Right. However, I do not uh, know which indiv- uh, not know the individual to which this belonged. Says I don't see any other obvious method uh, markings whether this was a, a cleric or paladin of Pablo Sag or not. Well, I saw the body. Was it was it decayed at the time? I don't remember. Uh, it had, they uh, the party we found had been killed and partially eaten by jackal wares, and they were quite. And no, it was fairly recent. They were killed recently when we found them. So I couldn't really give a description of enough to... Uh, you remember it being a dragonborn? And in <laughs> heavy armor and wielding general martial equipment. This is the same individual we found that glaive on. Oh, the cursed item. <laughs> All right. I will... Bad penny as we refer to it. Yes, I will... Keep re- showing up. I will explain. You know, explain the st- the situation. And you're gonna give a general description, I assume. Uh, leave the glaive out of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's too vague. It's not. It's not uh, striking any memory with him. Then again, you assume he doesn't know every single individual who is of uh, a follower of Palvasog. The only real link to this would be the fact that he said that they are both of Lyrian make, which means a there's probably a temple dedicated to Palvasog in the city. And that they might both be associated with it. Yeah, just thought it'd be better in your hands than mine. Uh, like I said, ran a foul of some jackal wares a couple of months ago, and maybe next time you're at your temple or whatever, you can pass that information on. Someone might know about it. Anyway, like I said, it's just a bit of closure for that for us because, like I said, it was nothing I knew anything about at the time. Yeah. All three of them are quite impressed by this. 
I just rolled a reaction for each of them, and it was a 17, a 15, and an 18. Yeah. All of them are quite impressed by this. Needless to say, uh, the paladin whom you are talking to is the most impressed by this, and seems to actually be almost visibly moved by it a little bit. All right, well, best of luck to you in your adventures, uh, and have, have a good day. Sorry to have interrupted you. It says, uh, it says watch over you. It says, the, the uh, half orc says as you go. I can use all the luck I can get some days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, needless to say, you made a very good impression on those three. Hey! <laughs> Had to happen eventually. Yeah, very impressive. In fact, you can have inspiration for that, considering you actually <laughs> improvise that entire thing. Cool. Which is probably going to make the fact that they're so far our competition, our only competition so far for the tournament, interesting. Ah, uh, it's just going to be a fun tournament, so... Yes. Well, it's not like we're directly competing, so... Yes, as far as you know, that's not the case, and we don't know if there's going to be any attempts to or opportunities to sabotage or handicap other teams, but you suspect after that, the way that went, this will not be the case with them, if there is that opportunity. As you and I are leaving, yes, I said, this is a good opportunity. I think they've been out doing something because they got a bloody sack. With their... Yes, we did. And we it... both noticed that. And I don't think they've done any shopping yet, so let's head over to Rosemary's now and hopefully get there before everything's bought out. All right. So we want to head over to Rosemary's time and clockwork. Now, one thing I want to do as I'm leaving, mm -hmm. uh, have they made it to the counter? Yes, they're heading over there now to discuss it. Just before I head out, I want to know what's in the bag. All right, so we're going to stick around a little bit. Just for a second or two, just as we're heading out, just stand aside of people coming and going. Yeah. I just want to glance over. And... Yeah. It, we got here relatively early initially to sure. deal with this, but uh, now, it, now that it's approaching noon, uh, traffic is starting to pick up in the guild hall. Now people are coming awake and coming into deal, adventurers are coming to deal with whatever quests they're doing and bounties they have to, pa to cash in. All right, so make a perception check with advantage because I will also be watching. Uh, dirty 20. That's more than enough. All right, so... Uh, the... Uh, the armored woman with the great axe, whom you couldn't, whose uh, race you can identify, yep. literally takes the bag, which is bloody, I will remind you, and places it right down on the counter, and the clerk hurriedly moves away some paperwork before it gets soaked with blood. Yeah. And then unties the sack and basically opens it up in a relatively familiar, basically, <laughs> or method that we use to capture that cat. Yeah, the previous day. Or at least I used that. Yep. However, inside, what's inside here is not a cat. It is a severed head. Yes, of? Uh, the creature it, it is a definitely uh, you think, and yes, this is some sort of monster that is in here, not of any humanoid race you've ever seen. Does have a relatively humanoid appearance, except the head is larger, you would think, than the average humanoid, except some of the except some of the relatively larger ones. So okay. its head is vaguely skull shaped, almost as if not like skeleton not like actual skull, but it's like the flesh is pulled right against the bone. Like this creature had like a very dense bone structure that gives it almost skull like face. And its skin yeah. is pulled right against it. So it's uh, got bright, it's got a mane of white, snow white fur, yep. kind of a dark blue almost to almost navy to even almost black skin tone. It has bright red eyes, lots of teeth, and it has these, you're not quite sure how they fit into the bag, but almost like horns or almost like they're closer to antlers, in all honesty, like that of a deer. Okay. Most, and it is very, <laughs> uh, you can roll a nature check if you want. Actually, no, wait, no, this would be Arcana. <laughs> the way this thing's normal. 
Are you helping? Uh, sure. You can roll with my advantage. Oh, that's not going to help much. Uh, 13. Bad numbers. You do not recognize the creature with that roll, unfortunately. You do remember that there was another quest, which was to handle some sort of monster that was prowling around Lyria Hor, and miraculously to aid in the investigation. Right. But given the fact that we, nothing, no thing was really known about the creature, you can't really infer one way or the other if this is related to that or not. But clearly they're bringing in some sort of monster they killed. Yeah. Not terribly surprising, I'm sure. Except maybe the method is a little odd. Yeah, well, a lot of... Some, you do know that some bounties and uh, monster extermination quests do require proof. Yeah. I'm and sure I assume... If this... <laughs> okay. Let's right. uh, head on to Rosemary's. All right, so we head away from the guild hall and head towards... Well, basically the docks, because that's in the direction that Rosemary's Time and Clockwork is. Yep. And uh, we head in. Right. Yeah. There are a few other people in here just looking around, but there doesn't seem to be any uh, actual business being discussed at the moment. It's just more like people are browsing. Okay. Hi, Rosemary. How you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, she basically comes out of... Uh, uh, she looks up from well, floating, flying above the counter because she is only a foot tall being a pixie. Yeah. But she does recognize us and seems to be quite pleased to see us and waves to us as we head over. Well, we did spend a ton of money last time we were here. We did uh, also yeah, we did also give her a considerable amount of magic items. Yes. All right. All right. So I assume we're going to be getting down to what we want for the tournament. Yes. Uh, plus a couple of other things. Um, first thing I want to know from her is if she has any additional um, potion ingredients since the last time I was here. Well, obviously she has a great many herbs and uh, that can be used for spell components and potion ingredients. So I'm going to ask for something a bit more specific. Uh, I need more mandrake root for greater healing, and I need uh, uh, ingredients for uh, potion of a um, what's what's the salve called? I can never remember what it's called. Uh, it's, I can't remember the name of the individual associated with it. Being the K, uh, is someone it's basically just uh, we refer to it as healing ointment, basically. Right, so I because need... I can't cannot remember the name. Okay. So I need that, and right. I need the mushrooms involved in uh, potion of heroism. So you still have the nectar for the dragon lily. Yeah, I still have the dragon lily nectar. All right, let's. Uh, all right, so she is able to bring out uh, a, another large mandrake. Mm -hmm. She's able to place that down. That's fine. All right, to the next one. Is this one fresher than the last one? <laughs> she just got this in. She says, and as, however, <laughs> as uh, she points out that because greater healing potions are quite popular and that she is not the only individual to practice alchemy in the city. This is the only one she has in stock at the moment. That's fine. Okay. One's great. She points out to the ointment is, I don't have anything in stock for something that specific. There is... She says... Uh, she says, the recipe... I know the recipe for that uses the same standard healing herbs, which are used to making po standard potions. Yep. Is, but you would need something else that would have some sort of cleansing effect. She lists off a few types of ingredients... And as she does, you do remember that we have that medicinal powder which can be used yeah, to make... about to pull that out and ask her, would this work? Elixirs of health. So you take that out? I take her out and ask her if this would be sufficient for uh, the extra ingredients for right. that. She takes a bit of it out, just rubs it together, and you see her cast a spell over it. And she says, yes, this should be sufficient to... And for that purposes, I don't have anything else in stock for that. I'm afraid. 
That's okay. Thank you, Roger. Very helpful for that. And now for the third. And she, when we come to the third ingredient you asked for, yep. which were the mushrooms for the potion of the heroism, she says, she just takes her head again. And unfortunately, those, those are relatively hard to come by because I haven't been able to get any in yet. So in a way, you're getting two out of the three things. In a way. <laughs> in a way. Yes. You have it confirmed now that that uh, basically medicinal powder combined with uh, the healing herbs for potions can be used to effectively make more of this salve, which you can just basically add charges to it. Yeah. All right. And you remember you have two doses of that left. Yes. One we used on the alderman. Yes, Ivor. <laughs> All that long time ago. Yeah. All right. That's good. I'm glad that's settled that way. And uh, remember, the large mandrake group, there's enough of it that it can be used to make two greater yeah. healing potions with that. All right. So, um, I also need a, a scroll of Dimension Door, please. Ah, well, she says, ah, so now that we're moving away from uh, Alchemical, she goes out and pulls, goes to, basically, she has a shelf in the back. Of it, which we can see that there are tons of scrolls basically sorted. Yeah. And she comes out and pulls out a scroll of Dimension Door. She says, Just you just need the one of these. Do you want one? Oh, well, I know the spell, so just ask him. Uh, no, I can I can make one if I really want to. Cool, uh, no, one's fine. Thank you. All right. So, as you know, that's a four hundred the scroll costs 400 gold pieces. Yeah, okay. I don't remember what the Mandrake group cost. All right. The large Mandrake group comes to also another 100 gold. So we're at 500 gold so far. All right. And then you wanted some things. Yes. Is that all you want? You think you oh. were after the... Uh... Unless you've gotten some new magic items in. Uh, Not much, she says. It has only been a few days. Usually new magic items... Either come in irregularly when adventurers like yourself sell them in, or when I can get things in, which is usually usually takes a few weeks. Because right. either I'm creating them myself or I'm ordering them from the academy or other suppliers. Well, I have one question out of curiosity. The last time we were here, someone was uh, asking about a helm of teleportation. Because uh, yes, I believe you're correct. Yeah. Any word on? Did you make that finally, or? Uh, she says the uh, the order was never actually technically placed. Uh, I couldn't oh. meet uh, the customer's uh, uh, demand. Uh, sorry, t uh, uh, so she corrects herself. Time frame, and uh, <laughs> she corrects herself there from demand to time frame, and also uh, basically uh, the customer was unwilling to meet the cost required to make such an item. Uh, Okay. It's uh, not a minor magical trinket that the, uh, the customer was after. Uh, no, definitely not. No. All right, that's me. So that's you taking care of. So we're at five. So you can go ahead and mark off five hundred gold if you want to add that to your. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I. My preparations are mostly going to be copying scrolls down, but I have the scrolls and I have the ink and paper because we dealt with that last time. Yep. Did you want any more potions? Because that was the main, next thing I'm going to be moving on towards. Well, I'm hoping to make them. Yep. All right. So moving on to the potions. It does seem that some people have been here to buy out some of the potions that we've. She, well, I kind of expected that. At least the stand, at least the standard potions of healing. Okay. She says, "I have two. I have two. I have two regular potions of healing left." She says, "All my graders and the other ones are being bought out. There's uh, the Guildcrest tournaments in a few days, and there's been, and also there's been a few adventurers through." Because I'm, <laughs> they're buying me out of a lot of the potions I have. All right, do you want those two regulars? Uh, I think it's going to be important for us to have well, a as many healing potions going forward 
both for tournament engines in general. So yes, I'm going to buy the two remaining ones. So that's a hundred gold. Yep. All right. And the other thing I was thinking of is checking in on is you picked up a broom of flying here oh, yeah. recently, <laughs> which proved in quite handy us getting in and out of this city when yes. the tide was in. Yes. And flight can be quite the advantage in combat. And this is a method of flying that does not require a spell. Yeah. And yeah, and the broom isn't very expensive at 400 gold. Yeah. So I'm going to purchase the second of the, uh, well, now two remaining. So basically, I'm going to purchase one of the two remaining rooms of flying. Right. These aren't very difficult to come by. I can restock them easily enough. All right. All right. So that brings me also to 500 gold, conveniently. Huh. There you go. All right. And I am going. <laughs> Room. What? All right. Is that everything then? Everything but the actual work to do this. Yes, but that's everything we want to purchase at the moment, I think. Yeah. Right. So have yourself a great day. We'll see you again soon, I'm sure. All right. So I'll stuff the broom of flying into my uh, bag of holding. Yep. All right. So I assume at this point we're heading back to the Crested Kingfisher. Yep. And we had lunch. Uh, no, uh, because Aldrich and <laughs> the Archmage came to visit us over breakfast. All right. That's or first thing in the morning, basically, that sort of thing. And then I am going to try and make another potion. All right, so we go back and have lunch. Yep. You can use Arcane Recovery if you want. I did cast one... Spell last time before we haven't got a long rest in, so I'll regain that. What spell did you cast? I cast clairvoyance to take a look at what was going on in the uh, uh by the artifact we discovered. Ah, uh, correct, yes. All right, so you want to start by making a potion. Yes, I want to start by trying to make a potion of greater healing. We're going to go through the days of uh, preparing for this relatively quickly now because at this point we've got our purchasing out of the way and we just want to get have to do a few rolls for the things we're going to be working on. I'm going to cast the enhanced ability and then I'm going to try and make it the potion. What are you starting with? Potion of greater healing. Okay. So you take the remaining Mandrake Roof that you purchased last time. <laughs> yep. Uh, easily. All right. And you are able to produce a potion of greater healing. Yep. All right. I am going to, in a familiar move from last time, ask to borrow your spell book again. <laughs> and I'm, we discussed this le the spell last time. I thought, and I've been thinking about it since then. I think it's a good idea if I also copy down the web spell just to have. It may not come in too handy for the tournament, admittedly, because. But it might in a combat scenario. But the main reason for web I'm thinking going forward is sleep is becoming slightly less effective as a non-lethal method of incapacitating our opponents. Yeah. Which so I was thinking along yeah, the lines of, of between web and hold person as being a potential way. Technically, frost breath does restrain the victim, but also does a fair bit of damage or can. Yeah, it's not. And it's got a pretty big area of effect. Yeah. Nope. So, I understand. I'm going to cut I'm going to spend time copying web into my spell book. So it's only a second level spell. All right. Where did I put there it is? So that only takes uh two vials of the ink we yeah, there we go. On that note, I also want to learn Dimension Door from yours. All right. <laughs> well, Unfortunately, I'm transcribing a spell into mine at the moment, so you might have to wait a little bit, but yes. It only takes me uh, uh, four hours to copy down web. Well, Dimension Door is going to take eight. Eight, yes. Ugh. So, 
given the fact that we're you're also focusing on a potion today, we're probably going to need to yep. save that for tomorrow. Yep. All right. So that's the first thing out of the way. All right. So after that, we go to bed. Well, we have supper. We go to bed. We do our standard <laughs> precautions right. against intruders because it's becoming quite clear that Lyria isn't necessarily the safest place in the world. Nope. And we probably have an enemy now. Quite possibly. But so as we're going to bed, suddenly there the room shakes. We feel suddenly a basically almost like a the ground shaking. Like an earthquake. Uh roll a perception check, as and I'll do as well. Oh, wow. 14? 20 for me. Wow. Yeah. So between that, we feel that we do feel the ground shaking. We also hear that at the same time this kind of low sub bass, almost like a boom thing sound. Something blew up. I have a sneaky suspicion that I know what it is. Um, could you? We're about to go to bed, right? Yes. So I just basically just finished setting up the alarm spell, and you were about to cast your tiny hut. Could you cast clairvoyance, please? I I will. I assume we're taking or <laughs> taking a look at uh, the art the area we found that artifact yesterday. The only thing I know that could possibly blow up. That concerns us, anyway. Yes. There are a great many things in Lyria which could explode. Yeah, true. There's a magic academy. <laughs> yeah, but yes. but I'm going to go with my hunch. All right. So 10 minutes goes by, because that's how long it takes me to cast the spell. Yep. All right. So after the spell finishes, I'm going to close my eyes and take a look in the deeps beneath the, uh, the center of Lyria, where we found the artifact. Yep. All right. And I say initially, I'm not seeing an awful lot because there's a fair bit of smoke down there. No, that answers my question anyway. It takes a moment and it does clear. And in a few moments, I describe the fact that the artifact, which basically resembled a cube or a box for all intents and purposes, which the crystal fit into, is not where it was. And the ground around where it was is cracked and blasted, and there's a bit of a crater, and there are shrapnel and various bits of clockwork and other things we don't necessarily recognize. But if I was, but we're clearly still part of this artifact. And there are about half a dozen people also around here. Oh. Clearly, the, the investigation into what this artifact was was underway when this happened. Uh, are they still functional humans or individuals? Well, the first thing I, I tell you is I see that uh, the Archmage uh, who we speak spoke to earlier this morning there, yep. he's fine by the looks of it. There's He also seems to have pulled a few other people away from or whisked them away from by unknown means away from the explosion. But there are also there are two dead bodies, I say, of what appear to be, and I remember I just remember describing to you the watch officers who were basically standing guard the last time I cast clairvoyance to take a look down here. So clearly not everyone was so lucky. Well, it could have been worse. Yes. Least... And whatever <laughs> evidence or information they were hoping to gain from this object. It's not happening. Yeah. Someone is covering their tracks. Yes. And that was a fairly large explosion because there was, but it was also right by a pillar that needed, that shook, which is probably why we felt it in all the way up here. All right. I say, fortunately, it doesn't look like the pillar's too badly damaged. Hundreds of those things. Yes. 
right. However, right. that is very much <laughs> the situation we are in now. All right. Cancel your spell. Yep. Nothing we can do with it. No. So, well, let's go to bed. All right. So, we go to bed. I wake up for the next morning. All right. So, what do we want to do on our second day of preparations? Well, you want to copy Dimension Door down. Yes. And I want to try and make another dose of that healing salve. All right. Well, the scroll is going to take, uh, sorry, it's going to take you eight hours to copy down Dimension Door into your spell book. Yeah, it won't take anywhere near that long to make the potion, so. Yeah. So which one do you want to start with? I'll start with the potion. All right. All right, so this is going to be another medicine check. I assume, again, you're casting uh, Enhance Ability. Yep. All right. So you're going to be making a medicine check, and the DC is actually the same because they're uh, as the greater healing potion because they're both on common magic items. Yes. Another DC 15. Well, I rolled a 15, so... Alright, so you take the medicinal herbs and a bit of the medicinal powder, and you boil that up and <laughs> dry it out and grind up and make it into the ointment. So you can now add one more dose to that. Excellent. I'm getting successful at these. I'm very happy. Okay. Right. The next, uh, one second, I forgot to roll my new portraits for the day. That'll be good in a moment. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue my transcribing. I'm going, the next scroll I want, well, the next spell I want to copy in my spell book is from one of the scrolls I picked up recently, and that's Banishment, which we got from our, uh, our <laughs> Lich Benefactor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. You yours, used your scroll of Digby's hand, but I'm going to copy Banishment in. Well, I just rolled this proof. It was nothing, but I rolled an 18 yep. for one of my portents. So I'm going to use that for the Arcana check to copy it into my spellbook, which is more than enough, even before I had my plus eight. Yeah. Nope, right. That's good. So Banishment is in there now. I would also like to use the other one, but I have to. But it takes me eight hours to copy the spell down because it's fourth level. So... Uh, would I push it? That's a question. I, I could stay up and theoretically exhaust myself, but then sleep in because we are do are also taking tomorrow off. I'm going to just roll this for a second. Apparently, I feel like pushing myself. Go for Mostly it. because of the other portent number, which is good enough as well. All right, well, I'll roll your constitution check. Yeah. So I'm going to just to... So the second spell is Ice Storm, which I picked up when we first got to Lyria. We, uh, the last time we visited uh, Rosemary's. Yeah. So I'm going to use the 16, which I also rolled, to, which again is more than enough. All right. So that's all taken care of. So the scroll is at least getting copied down. Yep. It doesn't and now uh, I'll roll my constitution check for exhaustion. All right. So that's a 7 plus 5 is 12. Considering I'm staying up well past the usual amount of time, I think that's don't think that's going to cut it. Isn't that above the check? Not you only had to beat ten. Uh, uh, initially, yes, but I am also so that's the first check. But bear in mind, it does I have to do this multiple times because I am staying up sixteen hours and focusing on tra spell transcribing. We're pushing it a little bit here, so I think I'm going to have to make more than one check. Okay. All right, so the next one. That's an 18. All right. I'm only going to do two. I was just I wanted to give it the fair chance there. It wasn't going to be a moot point anyway. Yeah, we're going to sleep, so it doesn't matter. All right. And Actually, I'm going to be asleep while you're doing this. <laughs> yes. And then I'm going to turn in. So... I'm going to be sleeping in a fair bit just to, be, just to get my long rest. So you do wake up before I do. Yes. I have a question before you go to sleep. Actually, you'll be, I'll be asleep. It doesn't matter. I have one more day to make stuff, but I, never, I have what I want already. Yes. So, so you could theoretically try copying Dimension Door into your spell book. For mine. It wouldn't be difficult to borrow that. I already did that. 
Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. I matched that too. But we haven't... Uh, so you're in the, you haven't spent the day doing it, oh, I suppose. I made the potion first, remember? Yeah. And then... Doesn't matter. It does. It doesn't matter. Technically, you should have also rolled for exhaustion then, <laughs> because you would have been doing the same. So we are getting at the same time then, because. Well, hold on. Man. How long does it take to make a potion? Well, usually it's just not. It's usually done over a long rest. Is what we do usually do it, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll go with this now. So mm -hmm. we'll go with this now because the potion te technically making that salve would not take a full eight hours. But it's usually something we do as a normal routine as part of a long rest. Yeah, not worry about it. Don't worry That's about not important. All right, so I'm sleeping in. What are you going to be doing for your last day of preparation? I'm probably not going to be up to too much. Oh, that is a good question. I think I'm going to take it relatively easy and make a minor scroll. I haven't made one yet. No, most of the scroll scribing has been me. What would I want to make? Actually, you kind of inspired this. I'm going to make a scroll of web. Oh, It's a minor point that we can just discuss. I also would have picked up a bit of spider silk for the web spell as a material component. I have one. <laughs> it's fine. I could either run out and pick it up today, or I could have retcon and say we picked it up then. It's just a minor thing that isn't even remotely expensive to add. Or no. just pick some out of the corner of the room. Yes, there's also that. All right, so you're going to make a web scroll. Yes, I have to roll for this, don't I? Uh, yes, scribing a scroll does have uh, a cost involved. It is an arcana check, though. Yep. It's also only DC 12. Okay. Uh, somewhere in the 20s. Good enough. So it also takes you the same amount of time to to make the scroll as it took me to copy into my spellbook. So that's four hours now. Right. So but easy enough to do. Done. I'm not going to make anything else. I'm going to rest the rest of the day. Yeah. Go for a walk, maybe. <laughs> Eat. Yeah. <clears throat> and... All right. So we will be waking up the next day for yep. the day of the tournament. Yes. So before we do that, I'm going to roll my portents. For that day, there we go. Uh, pick what spells you want to prepare for this because this is going to be important. I already I've done that part because I I knew the tournament was coming up, so I put some thought into that. So yeah, I am prepared. All right, I'm just going to take a moment to do that now. Which means I no longer have enhanced ability prepared. Well, the odds of it actually coming up during the tournament were low. The first time I am preparing Wall of Fire. Ah. Well, we've seen you cast it before, but... <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the scroll. <clears throat> A lot of other stuff's pretty standard. All right, I am going to prepare web. And just to, I might come in handy to... Well, I do have the scroll of it now. My first scroll! Yay! <laughs> Definitely preparing Ice Storm. I gotta prepare Frost Fingers for the first time since I got Frost Breath. That's unusual. Well, just... You have so many more spells you can prepare than I. Yeah, there's that. And also, just going with the fact that I want to... This is definitely going to be a lot of combat. Yeah. I don't think they're going to take it easy on us in this tournament. I probably do not need sleep. I guarantee that we will not be sleeping in anything. Possibly webbing something. Mm -hmm. No, if I remember from the rules of the tournament is it's over when Yeah, it's uh, we're not going to be a... dead, yeah.
I'm also going to be preparing Dispel Magic for the, the first time. I am not. Might, might run to spell casting enemies. I uh, did not. That's another spell I didn't prepare because, well, it's going to be mostly combat, I suspect. Of course, it could be a monster that could hold us. Well, there's yes. that. I do have to spell magic prepared, so it's fine. Well, I'm not going to have time for clairvoyance. <laughs> and which I think I should rather I should prepare a gust of wind or dispel magic. I would probably say both. But since I have Dispel Magic prepared, it's well, less... Do you any good, or me any good, I should say, if you're the one that's held? No. All right. All right. I think that's the best I can give. There's still a few spells which probably aren't going to be very useful in combat, but I cannot change that now. I think I'm going in as combat ready as I've been ever been. Yeah. Well, I do not have dispel magic prepared. I guess that's the way it's going to be. All right. All set. Or right, as set as going to be. Yeah, I think we're as ready as we can be. So Go we head to the. <laughs> uh, we head to the arena. After our hearty breakfast. After our breakfast, yes. All right, so the arena is in the city. So people are being brought in. It's not in the inner ring, obviously, but it's in the outer ring. Yep. And there's quite the crowd for this, because this is the well finale to the basically the the end yeah. of their harvest celebration that's been going on since we got here. Yeah. So yes, the last day of a week long celebration, it seems. And they get to laugh and jeer at us getting the crap beat out of us. That is a possibility. Yep. All right. So we head to the arena. The seats are already being packed, despite the fact that we are <laughs> are just getting there. Well, yeah. I mean, everyone wants to get a seat or a good seat. Yes. The other it's thing we noticed is that this... <laughs> No, it's not. There does also seem to be a fair bit of uh, betting being going about at the moment. Cool. What are the odds of us winning? Out of curiosity. Uh, despite the fact that we've uh, recently been given quite the boon by no less than the Archmage himself, himself, we are still a relatively unknown entity, and it doesn't people don't seem to be the odds don't seem to be too much in our favor yet. Do you want to bet on us? Uh, there's already been mention of prize money. I think that's fine enough. Yes. I want to bet on this. You can if you like. What are my odds? If I bet 100 gold pieces, what do I get if I win? I'm going to... Uh, apparently the odds are current... Currently one to four. I bet a hundred gold pieces. I get five hundred gold pieces. Uh, at the moment, yes. The odds might change. Uh, I'm nailing my bet down now. I'm gonna bet two hundred gold pieces for us to win. All right, so that's a thousand gold if you, if you if win. win, and if we lose, you lose your two hundred gold. Yeah. Assuming I, I understand gambling correctly. I don't do it very often. Okay. Yeah. So I'll get my ticket and I'll tell them get my money ready. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a right, so... <laughs> this, is a, this is a reputable bookie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Roll an insight check. 
Yeah, I mean, I should do that. <laughs> oh, roll an 18 plus one. Uh, this seems like an officially sanctioned event. You think that they're relatively reputable? He thinks you're making a foolish wager, but that's about it. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right. So, clerks from the guild hall, whom we recognize, are basically escorting us to, for all intents and purposes, the backstage area. The death floor. For all intents and purposes, the waiting room. Green room. <laughs> Whatever you want to refer to it as. All right. Who's here? All right, so we are taken down there, and there are two other groups at the moment. The ones we met yesterday? The group of three we met yesterday is here. I wave at them. We wave That's for them? Yeah, they say the same to us. They're off to our left as we enter. <laughs> to our right, on the opposite side of this area, <laughs> that is a group of four. Okay. There is a dwarf in full plate mail with a two-handed sword at his side, and he's in the middle of sharpening it, and it's hard to imagine this individual as being anything else than just a thoroughly dedicated warrior. Dang. <laughs> Literally <laughs> getting the definition, you think, because his helmet even has a visor that comes down. When he's in battle, every inch of his body is covered in steel. All right. All right. Next to him is a human woman dressed in robes, but not magic user robes. These aren't, uh, these look much closer to uh, what you would consider, I suppose, uh, the term vestment is the best word to describe them. Uh, you've encountered, you've heard rumor of monks, basically, and this is what brings to mind. This woman has a shaved head and and she has wrappings all around her hand. She looks like someone who has dedicated herself to martial arts. All right. And carries no other obvious weapons. All right, but it has some pretty tough knuckles. Mm -hmm. uh, the next individual is also a woman, a half-elf. She's dressed in basically all in green and brown and wood-colored themes, and we've encountered at least a few other druids in our time, and she brings to mind that because she has literal elements of plant life about her outfit, including a circlet of, around her head, which is literally just braided basically vines and other so, and roots and basically just bramble, yep. which uh, seems to be there. And uh, she's standing off to the side there, and the last individual fits with what we might expect a magic user to look like or of some sort. Okay. He's dressed in robes and elven an elvish individual, though exact you know, it's hard to tell exactly of which <laughs> distinction of the various <laughs> various diverse bloodlines of uh, elven people exist, except for the fact he's probably not a drow because they tend to stand out. I waved and said best of luck to you in the tournament. Okay. All right. No comment from them? I'm going to see what happens. They're very, very focused. Uh, okay. That was a four. Oh, well. Can't oh, be uh, cannot please everyone. No, All right. Basically, the clerk we're talking to. All right. I've already explained this to er the proceedings to everyone else, but I'll do it to you quickly because before we get underway here. The tournament is divided into three rounds. Each round has a theme as to bo so to boost uh, basically public interest. Right. Themes were decided a long time ago, and each round will present will will pit you against a mo one or more monsters per round. But these monsters are all the the you'll be fighting against are the same. This is each of you will be fighting against at least one monster. So each round there's at least three fights. Uh, which team fights which monsters determined completely randomly? Just to ensure total fairness and also as a way of maintaining excitement. Yep. 
It says this will continue until each round until the round has ended, and then there will be a short break while we clear the arena for the next round. And Ooh. the uh, this is, if you uh, this is, each individual who participates in the term is guaranteed a guild crest fragment. As we'll get to that in a moment. The others already have theirs. Anyone who makes it to the end is also guaranteed a second one. It says and the prize money is divided among uh, any teams that make it to the end. It says if all three of you make it, it's divided three ways, and two make it, it's divided two ways. If only one team makes it, then you get the entire pot. All right. It says, we have clerics on standby. He points over to the side, and we see for the first time three individuals in priestly robes with holy symbols set sat to the side to ensure that uh, no injuries are permanent from this tournament. So your health is guaranteed. However, apart from the only situations in which they will assist you is... If you are all not your team is entirely not unconscious, they will stabilize you and ensure that your lives, or they will rouse anyone, an individual member who is knocked out. If you, in the event that you still manage victory, but one of your members is rendered unconscious, fair enough. It says they will not be healing you in between rounds for any other reason. <laughs> it says, anything else? Else you have, we will have to be make do with what you have. All right. Just, do you understand these uh, rules? Simple enough. Right. You've and you accept for the fact, uh, and this is your last chance to back up if you've changed your mind. No, oh. definitely not. Yep. Right. The clerk reaches into his uh, pocket and pulls out the <laughs> a, a guild crest fragment for each of us and hands them to us. Says, Cool. Yep. And you can add that to your character sheet because that one is guaranteed. So we're up to four now. Yep. You fit them in to our <laughs> increase. At which point we do uh, realize that we do see the eyes of the other two adventuring parties on us. <laughs> I want to also watch as they put theirs in. How much do the uh, head choppers have? All right. uh, you can roll a perception check. I have my all of it at the moment. Hmm. 15. All right. The three of them each take out a, a segment of the fragment and they're fitting it in. They have the exact same amount that we have. They currently have, with that, four fragments. So they seem to be tied with us at the moment. Oh, the other guys. The group of four, on the other hand, is being given, well, basically a fragment that has a long cord and silver thread on it. So the initial the fragment that we were given. So this is their first one. Uh, newbies. And I rolled to see if they were going to be able to conceal that fact either of them and no they both roll below your perception check all right so now we know how everyone else has been doing here so far in the terms of uh, accumulating guild crests yes sorry well right. before i forget and get started in the term and early uh pop my all into existence <laughs> don't need to be oh that's one spell i forgot to do too late uh, I assume you're thinking of Dragon's Breath. Yep, forgot all about it. Well, it's too late to say it, to change your mind now. Yeah, so yep. I, assume, I don't think our familiars are going to be too much of a help in this fight anyway. Oh, yeah, I know, but I can cast it on myself. All right, the clerks uh, say to that, and they all start clearing out. Except for one individual who seems to be going around and talking to the remaining three, remaining behind and talking to each group. Before the clerk goes away, who's up first? <laughs> Do we know yet? It'll be. It says we'll be determining that randomly. All we'll right. be determining. It says yeah, basically. I'll All be right. determining that in a moment. All right. Uh, can you make another perception check? Oh, my owls are not here. Yes, your owl is. Your owl is vanished. I'm going to roll this too, though. Seventeen. Thirteen. We both notice this. One of the clerks has remained behind. That's. And seems to be discussing currently with the group of three and E that we met earlier. Yep. 
something and in hushed tones and we're able to overhear it. It says, not that roll. It says, uh, for a slight fee, I might be, I could let you in on the themes for the monsters. It says, I don't know the exact ones, but I know what the, but I do know what every round is going to be going forward. It says, it might give you a slight advantage. We're going to see how they respond to this. Positively, you see them hand over, uh, count out some gold and hand it to him. Well, I'm listening because I don't want to pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> I will now ask for another perception check because he's going to be whispering again. Actually, let's say I'm going to pop my owl back out because <laughs> this is too important. I will allow that. That's fine. 17. 17. All right. I rolled 16. We're not able to make this out. He rolled an 18 total. So he's discreet enough this time. We yeah. don't get anything from that time. How much was the money that was handed over to get a rough idea of that? 50 gold. That's a lot of money. I think this clerk might be making a fair bit of coin on the side here. Yeah. He then crosses over to the other side of the room and talks to the group of four. So you might have another chance here. Twenty-one. All right, they're more reluctant than the previous group, ah. but they are still make, paying the price. All right. All right, I'm going to. We all right. Well, he rolled a natural one this time. All right. So yes. he seems to be a little annoyed by the fact that uh, he's not shouting because that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Twenty-one should be enough. Yeah, but he was basically I think he's getting frustrated by the fact that they're trying to haggle with him basically for this information. Right. So they do pay over the fifty gold. So he's made a hundred gold thus far. Yep. And he says, "All right." He says, he pays wages." All right. And then we listen in with the aid of your owl. Says, "All right." The first round, the theme is tales of horror. The monsters in this round are all creatures who are from well-known ghost stories or are sources of nightmares, legends among people's imagination. Says. So Says I don't know the exact creatures. I don't know what the exact creatures are, but I assume going on a theme that some undead might be a pretty fair guess. Oh, Paladin will love that. Round two, the theme is walking among titans. The monsters of this round, I know for a fact, are all going to be giant kin or other or creature or other exceptionally large creatures for that round. Okay. This Oh, the dwarf smiles at that, by the way. <laughs> the third and final round is Terror from the Sky. Because now, this was really, really hard to find information out. All I know is the fact that the round for that round, all the monsters will be facing will be flying creatures of some sort. Cool. That's, that's all I can really give you, unfortunately. All right. At which point, the clerk turns and comes towards us. <laughs> And makes us the exact same offer he made the two of them. Well, thanks. <laughs> he looks a little disappointed. However, he just made a hundred goals that he. So he You're then runs off. Sleight of hand. Sorry. You're lucky I don't have a sleight of hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I will now pop my owl back out of existence after giving her a good pet and saying thank you. Right. Yeah, so now yeah. we have a bit of information about what's coming up. However, since we've already completed our preparations, who knows how much helpful that's going to be. None whatsoever. All right. At which point we hear the crowd outside beginning to cheer. Clearly, the, everything is getting underway. And we hear a ma the Master of Ceremony speak up, and uh, she says, People of Lyria, it says, welcome to the Guildcrest Tournament. This is the final day of your long uh, celebration after a full year of hard w work towards keeping our city going. Yep. After this, you go back to work. <laughs> we have three impressive teams. Oh, there, oh, sorry, there's one thing we have to clarify beforehand. Yep. Each team is apparently being announced. So what are we going to be announced as? Fire and Ice. All right, fine. We're going with the title of either a segment of a George R. R. Martin book or a relatively mediocre 80s film. 
was okay. I said mediocre. Uh, anyway, uh, so that was clarified. I forgot to mention that before, but it's a minor thing. Yes. Technically, we probably would have had to have clarified that when we signed up for the tournament. Yeah, I would have signed it up as Fire and Ice. No problem. We have three teams We've today. We've to do this for a while now. <laughs> yeah, you have. He has. Trust me. Yeah. We have three teams joining us today, fighting against the adventurers who will be proving their metal to defend you against the various hordes of nightmarish creatures which threaten our walls from day to day. Says. Says first, we have a group of who you might know who have been in Lyria for the past few months. Says, and just recently vanquished the creature which prowled, prowled the street, prowled the outskirts of Lyria, a dreaded Wendigo. Says, they are your local, they are your champions. Says, the headhunters. And you see the group of three, not in the call. Yeah. Well, it's I know they are now. What it is now? <laughs> that's a trademark. Our second group, by far the smallest group we have ever had, could participate in the tournament. It says a team of two, it says who have only recently appeared in Lyria, but despite this fact, have already proven that with a combination of their knowledge and and their magical prowess, that they can defend the and even the common folk from various horrors that plague them. We have the team Fire and Ice, as they refer to themselves as. It says who dealt it says who managed to not only foil an infernal incursion within a short time within Lyria, but also aid the various children who had fallen under some sort of magical sleep recently. There's an applause to that. And it's pretty clear that the people are sizing us up at this point that we were the ones dealing with that. And lastly, another group of newcomers to our fair city says a relatively more standard numbered team that we're used to dealing with is the Giant Slayers. She says, says, whom have uh, says, who have unfortunately been met with a rather string of unfortunate luck as of lately, it seems. However, this might be the chance for them to reverse their fortunes. From that, uh, you get this thing, the group of four who is just gaining their first guild crest fragment might have been having some difficulties recently. Anything I know about that? Have I heard anything? Uh, you would have needed to inquire long before this. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately. I will right, do so later. Yeah. All right. She says, now, without further ado, we will begin... The selecting for the participant for the contestants for the first round. All right. One of our three teams will be fighting against one of our three monsters for this round. The round theme for the first round is is tales of horror. This is monsters which have plagued your nightmares and your children's and says and your children's ghost stories since ancient times. How can our champions? Fair against fear itself. And now, and I will roll. So the way this works is I've assigned each team uh, a number for one on a D6. We're one and two. The headhunters are three and four. Yep. And the giant slayers are five and six. And each round I have also assigned one of the three monsters the same set of numbers. Yep. I'll be rolling two D6 and we'll be seeing who goes first. All right. Well, this First up, she says, the headhunters. Four. This is random. That's okay. I'm just impatient. Yeah, so we won't be us up first. No. So the headhunters ready themselves. The gate goes up. You can move ahead to the next image if you want to take a look at the actual arena floor now. Cool. Technically, we've seen it before, but now's a good chance to show it. So this is a sand-covered floor, and those are cur- those walls of stone are which curve in there yep. are technically uh, only c- aren't that tall, but they come up to about five feet in height. And there's about a five-foot gap. Basically, there's almost like a mini fort there. All right, and that's not actually a magic circle. It's just the closest I get to. It's basically a crest that's in the center of the arena. 
And the headhunters are being directed to walk directly to it. Okay. Really, that's the starting point where we're going to be beginning this. Okay. And he says, here, let us see how they handle against their opponent. The west gate of the arena. There's four gates, one in each cardinal direction. We're entering from the south. The west gate opens. And a creature starts coming out at a it's tall so you're a little confused the fact that giants would be the theme for the second round this isn't giant size but it's larger than a human it's about eight feet tall and it looks almost like a mix between a person and an anatomical model there are suture marks all over the creature as it lumbers out and its gait is not Graceful, it's kind of almost shambling someone would expect to a zombie, but you don't think it's undead. You can roll in our contract if you want. Our katana be uh, 24. Well, that beats my 14 by quite a bit. You've heard of various types of golems that exist that magic can create, and this is one of the more morbid looking ones. This is a flesh golem. Frankie! <laughs> uh. well, it's definitely bolting in. Sorry? Lightning. Don't be lightning bolting in. No. Yes. These creatures tend to be able to absorb lightning to heal themselves and even charge themselves up. And they tend to not like fire very well. Okay. Not undead, but uh, definitely a creature of nightmare. Yep. Let's see how they do. And uh, we'll be going this. All right. So we're not going to be going through everything here. I'm going to be basically treating this as a best of three rolls here on 2d20s. Each team has modifiers, though, just to so we don't have to sit around through the entirety of this. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm, have, we're having to narrate nine fights. Okay. The uh, the half orc paladin and the uh, warrior woman, who you didn't recognize, yeah. it's with the we were able to find her species charge at the golem, whereas the third individual, the magic user, brings up her rod and starts firing off these bolts of uh, crackling and shimmering energy. We've seen a cantrip done similar to this. This looks like quite similar to Eldritch Blast, except the last time we've seen this, it was we've seen it before, it was like crackling dark energy, like ultraviolet uh, tinged with black or blood red in some ways. This is closer to what you think almost in color to what you've seen celestial entities conjure before, but it's a, clearly the same cantrip but it seems to come from a different source. The bolts slam into the creature and they damage it, but it's a flesh golem. It's difficult to yeah. tell exactly. It looks like it's been damaged already quite a bit. And then the, the paladin and the fighter get in to attack it. And unfortunately, they're not as lucky. The creature starts picking them up and throwing them around to a pretty causing some pretty harsh damage and throw, costing them back. It won the first round. Wow. Uh, Alright, so, they put the bat, however, they're able to redouble after that and they're able to push it back. The paladin brings down the hammer and it, it the maul and it flashes with a celestial light as uh, the uh, as the uh, fighter goes in with her great axe and also scores a few more hits. Uh, right? Uh, as far as you can tell, a paladin's smite effect is mostly what that was, yes. Uh, and their magic user is also able to fire off, or the warlock is able to fire off more of Elder's Blast to score more hits. Uh, they're able to avoid taking any real harm, th uh, th however, they're not able to avoid taking harm themselves. They take damage, but they clearly want, came out the, oh, on the lead on that one. Right, right. Round three combat. And it goes back again in favor of the flesh golem. It literally picks up the pallet, the half orc, after being smited and just tosses him to the other side of the fort. Wow. And he collapses against the stone wall. He's not down, but that was a massive blow. And it doesn't. <laughs> and the fighter has to fall back too. And uh, you watch as the warlock runs over, presumably to help tend to the paladin's injuries. Round four, this is not going, looking too well at the moment for the headhunters. No. 
All right. Uh, this round, however, much like again, there's if you want it back and forth, this is it. Oh, the crowds are going crazy. Yeah, the crowd is cheering as the fighter is able to hold off the flesh golem single-handedly with her great axe. Axe taking scoring hits and hits while the warlock goes over and tends the paladin, and between the paladin's land hands and much to your surprise, a healing spell cast by the warlock is able to get the paladin back up into fighting condition. Wow. And it's only slight it's mostly them recovering that round, but they're definitely scoring back and the pal and both sides are taking a beating. This yeah. will be a fighting factor because it's two to two. Yep. This is the closest fight you've seen in a long time. <laughs> Clearly they got the harder end of this fight. Of the selection process here. They get knocked out? No, but it's close. All of them pile on and start doing damage. Unfortunately, the creature is just tearing through their ranks as it goes through, but they eventually manage to bring it down. None of them, man, each of them is bloodied by this point by the end of the fight. Well, this is round one. This is round one. I'm just gonna give you a bit of a. They basically have some. Mod, each team has a bit of modifiers. That was literally as close as a plus one. The final decider was one point in favor of the Headhunters. Wow. But they are able to bring down the Flesh Golem. And in true to their name, Top on its head. the fighter brings down her great axe and decapitates the creature. Admittedly, it was, dis it was no longer functional before then because cutting off a Golem's head is not going to cause much. Yeah. All right. Just, and they're brought back into our little area for cheers, but they're they're exhausted. Clearly, the this tournament can go quite, can get quite rough quite quickly. Yeah, I was not expecting that round one. No. But you think that they probably got the hardest, they might have got, uh, either they got the hardest entity or we're going to be in for quite a challenge. Yeah. A hard won victory for the Headhunters. It says, the Flesh Golem is defeated. It says, it says, well, I'm sure whichever research team put that together at the Academy, they can take a, a loss. Fix it. They'll just fix it, probably. It says, now, without further ado, we move on to our second bout of the round. So I'm modifying this again. Basically, now we're one to three, and the giant slayers are four to six. Yep. And so are the other monsters. You'll you'll be happy. It's us. Hey! <laughs> says now our his, our ironically he says it seems we'll be seeing our seeing our champions fight in the order which I originally presented them. Next up is fire and ice. And then we will be seeing the Giant Slayers get their turn. Like yep. glory. All right, so again, the gate opens up. And we are let out, and we go into the center arena. Yep. I wave at everybody. All right. Are we going to be doing anything before the round starts? Well, considering what I just saw, yep. I want to cast a second level spell. Mirror image, I assume. Oh, yeah. Before we reach the crest, there's now eight of us going there. This, oh, they seem to be taking advantage, uh, taking to heart uh, what they just saw and are being a, going in a bit more prepared. That, and I want you us to spread out a little bit, about twenty feet between us. Right. We are, yeah, we're being okay. So we're standing in the central area. So which side are you taking? Uh, we're gonna wait until we know which gate that's gonna come from, but then. Right. Yeah, we are directed to stand in the, on the on the crest for the start. We're on the crest. Yeah. They came from this gate last time, right? Yes, there are three other gates though. So there are three gates. We know we come from the southern gate because that's where we're all being kept. Uh, I just gotta assume it's gonna be this one here. So I'm gonna. We should spread out like here and here, facing that way. And if this one opens up, we'll switch immediately so it's like this and this facing right. that way. All right, and then. The gate opens. It is, in fact, it, your uh, guess is wrong. It is the western gate again. Right. It seems they, 
What? Yeah. We switch ourselves then. Near a uh, gate. Based on that fact, you assume each of these gates is holding the different mon- the monsters for the different rounds. Yep. All right, and as we, right, I'm just gonna pull up the what I need. One second. All right. So as we and coming through the western gate, we see uh, a, another basically animate cadaver. But this one is not as tall, is more emaciated, and is head to toe in bandages. Oh, a mummy. Yes. We see it coming. It sees us. It points its finger directly at us, and its eyes flare with uh, undead energy, and it starts to charge to the best of its abilities towards us. Oh. Initiative? It is being hampered slightly in that regard, and yes, we are rolling for initiative. I have a nine. It has an 18. And I have a 10, so you're going last, I'm afraid. Yes, it's been happening a lot lately. Well, if I remember mummies correctly, it's a little slow. Yes, it's not. It's quite similar to the last one. It and the fact that gate is not very. Uh, How far away slow. is it from us? When the gate opened up. Uh, basically, it's going. Uh, it is. Uh, well, we're standing in the center here at the moment. Yep. So it's about forty feet from us. Okay. And it's about uh, it's about twenty feet from this uh, little mini fort that you've given us to the other gates. But here, which is forty feet from here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right it's here. coming from the west, though. This way. Yeah. But isn't that where the last one came from? Yes. It seems to be that they're they're not actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. All right. And your hit point total? Just to write, have it down? 75. We both have mirror image up. Yep. Is up first. What's our shambling pile of bandages going to do? Well, it's going to shamble towards us. Yep. All right. It is going to. So basically, it makes it up to the uh, wall, the out, or outer basically wall, right about uh, a bit further out, basically the other side, basically right there. Yep. All right. And you don't see any obvious means of it fighting other than its bare hands. Yep. However, it is going to... Let's roll to see who it goes for. It's always you. It's always me. It locks eyes with you, and its eyes flare with that evil light again. And it gets yep. a, this low moan. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. All right, start off with the saving throws right off the bat. Uh, I have plus six on this, if I remember correctly. Yes. 19. 19, all right. You look into this thing's eyes and you feel fear well up inside you, but through years of mental discipline and experiencing various magical effects which influence your mind, you're able to resist and you shrug it off. You, uh, make a gesture you resisted its dreadful glare. Alright. Alright. So that was its action, which means it's not... What? I say to him, is that the best you can do? It seems to be, at the moment. That was its action, so it can't dash towards us. Alright. Alright. So we come to me now. 
All right, I said, well, this seems to be off to a slightly better start for us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, well, let's try to see how it likes a classic. I'm going to hit with Magic Missile. <laughs> Just at first level. Uh, I know these things are prop. I think they're weak to fire. I don't have any fire. <laughs> I know. Or the fire of the two of us, so that's a terrible magic missile. I, uh, hit it with uh, eight points of force damage. Oh, God, that's Three terrible. Ones. Yeah, no, that was a that was a terrible roll. Let me say. All right. And I think you said you wanted us to uh, scatter a little bit. This thing's slow. Back up. Yeah, I'm going to actually back up 30 feet of movement, which puts me outside the opposite side of the... Uh, it's kind of, I'm going to head back out that way, yeah. Which technically puts me off of the map a little bit. Okay. All right. We come to you now. And I think it's weak to fire, but I'm going to try out. I'm going to actually just use a cantrip. And I'm going to cast Firebolt. Make your attack roll. Would a uh, 13 hit us? Uh, you're, as this fire won't leave, you're like, that's probably not going to, and it probably, it would not hit a creature if it had a bit more dexterity to it. But this creature seems to be a little slow. It reminds you to an extent of fighting the zombies we fought before. So yes, that oh. does hit. Cool. Let's see how it likes fire. That will be 12 points of damage. All right. Real world history fact here for everyone. There was a time in which mummies in actual ancient Egypt were used as firewood. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. They are quite flammable, as is this. Ah, so it appears... Right, and it pretty... bursts into flame a little bit, and uh, a bit more, and the fire is very effective against this creature. I think I just made myself a target. Yes, it's on fire and it's burning quite severely. It puts it out, manages it somehow, but you can see that it's already burning and you did a lot to damage to it in a single, well, with a single cantrip. I back up to uh, where you are. Oh, but I'll, I'll take this side, you take that side. All right. A little difference, really, at that point. Yeah, there's a difference. But it's fine. All right, we come to the mummy's turn. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is not intelligent <laughs> enough to plan a strategy for this, unfortunately. Okay. Now it uh, marches into the center of the arena, which basically gets another twenty feet close to us. Which, as far as you can tell, is how fast this thing can move. It's basically, yep. and it well, is. 30 feet from us at the moment. Yes. It is going to lock eyes with me now because it tried against you and failed. And then try its dreadful glare again. Alright, my wisdom sick. Yep, alright. I managed to succeed much as you did. This is uh, <laughs> not going well for it because, again, it can't dash closer. Nope. Alright, we come to me. Well, I think we definitely got dealt the easier hand here. Well, it doesn't like fire, so I'm happy. All right, I'm going to, I said, yeah, I think I'm going to try and conserve my spell slots for more difficult encounters, which are in all likelihood definitely coming. Okay, I'm going to hit with Frostbite, see how it likes the, the, my temper. <laughs> all right. Well, it fails with a 12. Okay, seven point of cold points of cold damage. 
seem to not like it. Uh, it takes the damage, but that's about it. Right. It has disadvantage on its next attack roll, if it can reach us. <laughs> oh look, it's your turn! <laughs> oh look, another fireball. I see no reason to change my tactics. <laughs> oh, that's so close to a natural 20, but it's not. Well, I assume you obviously know it hits then. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it hits. Sixteen, which doubles to thirty-two. All right, do you want to kill this thing in a spectacular fashion? I want its head to blow up. <laughs> All right, in an homage to how the headhunters dispatched their creature, you hurl the firebolt high up to the creature's head, which is technically a few inches above ours. It is taller than we are, and its head goes up in a fireball, despite the fact you didn't cast the spell. <laughs> And in within a matter of seconds, the entire thing is on fire, and a few seconds more, it's ash. Yeah. At which point, our mirror image is, is <laughs> expire shortly afterwards, as we yeah. are greeted with a round of applause. It says, it says, it says well, <laughs> it, uh, it see the uh, master story says it seems we have. A, it says a case for bra for brains over brawn here. It says our two heroic wizards were able to dispatch that mummy with ease. <laughs> this flawless victory. <laughs> yes, we haven't had one of those in quite some time. And uh, we are uh, we are brought back in. The headhunters give us quite the applause, despite they're obviously being relatively injured. You see them tending to their injuries, but. They gave us an applause that that was well done in quick succession. The giant slayers also are giving us a, as that was impressive. No one can deny that. Yes, that would be perfectly fair. We did get the easy of the, of the three fights. Oh, I promise well. this is random, though. Yeah, that's, it happens. I mean, there's two more rounds. I mean, can there leave. is two more rounds, yes. We're not through this. All right. But there is no point in rolling for the remaining bout for this round because there's only two teams. There's only one combat on each side. Yes. Now, welcome the giant slayers to see how they can test their metal against our remaining horror. And the group of four heads out. Yep. And they take a similar idea to what uh, we did, except they're all facing and basically a, a square, a tight square formation in the center. Yeah, like this. Yeah, and they all and they seem to be facing the same gate that uh, yeah. the previous two creatures have come out of. The gate goes up, and there is a loud hissing noise as a as a serpentine creature exits. The gate. However, it is a skeletal serpentine creature. It is basically a giant snake-like skeleton that is animate. All right. The only sign apart from the bone is that it has a similar flicker of a dark uh, intent in its eye sockets that we saw in the mummy that we faced. Yeah. All right. And... The giant slayers ready themselves to face this creature. And uh, let's see how it goes for them. So, yes. We definitely got the easier of these two bouts because much like the uh, headhunters, yep. they get off to a rough start. Because unlike with the unlike the previous two encounters that we that we do about, this creature is not just brute force. It seems, as you watch as its mandible jaws basically move, in a style which we're rather familiar with, and it vanishes. Uh, 
Oh. And reappears behind the formation that they formed. Wow. And uh, in a, it's a very, firm, it's a spell that we both recognize because I cast it on oh, several right. occasions as it misty steps behind them. Wow. And then it rears back and bites down towards the magic user. And it bites into him and lifts him up. And despite the fact that this thing is a snake skeleton and therefore has no real it venom is. sack. Yeah. Oh, that too, sorry. Yeah, there does seem to be some sort of uh, either necrotic effect or some form of poison being injected into the magic user system. And it he drops down and he's conscious, but he took a lot of damage. And the remaining three have to rally to try and and just correct themselves to fight this creature as it comes up quite close to them. Wow, that's unexpected. That's uh, no, we seem to be up against a ma a spell casting opponent now that or at least they are. Yeah. All right, the second round. Well, in all fairness, ours was too. We just made the saving throws. No, technically that was an ability, not a spell, but yes. All right. However, they're able to get themselves back on their feet here, but it's a and they managed to pull through. But it's a relatively rough round for them. <laughs> the Doran fighter goes in swinging with his two-handed greatsword. The monk goes in and starts striking blows at a creature that's made entirely of bone. <laughs> so not easy, but she's able to get him blows. The druid manages to heal the magic user, who also casts a very familiar looking magic missile spell as five arcane darts arc out around the creature and all come down and strike it. Which then the <laughs> the bone naga, as it is, answers with its own spell. And as it speaks incantation, it opens its mouth as though to exhale something that it lacks lungs. A bolt of lightning arcs from between its okay. gun, as a point-blank lightning bolt tears through all four of the giant slayers. Yeah, we got the easy one. Sorry? Yeah, we got the easy one. Yep. Yeah. We did. We did. But it was just as likely could have been either of them who got this. Yeah. That was a rough round all around for everyone. But the giant slayers were able to pull through and pull ahead slightly. Right. So Round one. three. That is caught. All right. However, despite taking a massive bolt of lightning, the close range proximity is now working against the Bone Naga as it's now in melee with two heavy hitters and have and two magic users who are now able to go to uh, pull the sides and they're now flanking the creature effectively with the Dwarven Fighter and the Druid heading around to its uh, northern side, and the Wizard and the Monk moving around to the southern side. And they're able to start getting in quite a few blows in melee, as now they're flanking it, and the Druid casts out another healing spell. Oh, this time I'm getting the entire party in, the, in it, and... The wizard is able to cast off, not wanting to risk any area effect spells, just cast off another high level magic missile as five more darts strike it. That's two third level spells. Yeah, the bone naga is starting to show signs of serious damage. There's segments of its bone falling off, and it is seems to be going back and forth on what to do here. And it then seems to come to the decision to missy step again. And uh, we see it now taking advantage of the cover. Unlike the previous two creatures, this one seems to possess some um, intelligence to it, in addition to its spellcasting abilities. And it teleports to the northwestern section of the wall there, and it tele takes cover behind it. Over here? Yeah. However, the giant slayers are taking full advantage of their numbers and were able to do a lot of damage to it in one round. Yeah. And, unfortunately, the low walls might give it some cover, but not enough as the monk and the dwarf both leap 
over the wall and land right on the opposite side of the bone naga and with quick succession before the druid and the wizard can cast off another spell the two of them in quick succession cut down the creature and they are victorious they burn through a lot yep a few high level spells there and uh, <laughs> the also in order to get there the dwarf had to dash which means in order to attack the same round had to use his action surge Oh. However, they win. They win, and they did. They took s- somewhat less damage than the headhunters did in the long run. Yeah. Though uh, that lightning bolt didn't help. And they come back in and says, Well, there you have it. An exciting first round as our heroes prove themselves capable of facing against your worst fears. He says, Will they all make it through the remaining rounds? We have two more rounds to go. It says, however, we will take a slight break while you allow yourselves time to refresh yourselves, to place your any bets you might have, and to allow our heroes a brief respite. And also at that point, we will take our break. <laughs> okay. All right, round one down. Round one done. We'll be back here in a moment to wrap up, with, to continue with the next two rounds. <laughs> 